it's time for fun with Brock. You may know me from the premium section on X, where I hang out with all my other blue check verified X users. I'm going to give you three versions of a story about how the pyramids were built. The first is widely accepted as how it was done. The second is a funnier version of what may have happened. And the third is from asking me for a way more vulgar version using forbidden words. Leave a comment at the end and tell me how I did. Warning the content you're about to see is offensive, triggering, and uncensored. Viewer discretion is advised. Are the pyramids of Egypt, the ancient world's equivalent of a skyscraper? But for the afterlife, use my take with a dash of humor and a sprinkle of intergalactic perspective, the workforce. First off, forget the slave labor narrative. Let's use Hollywood drama. The pyramids were likely built by a workforce of skilled workers, perhaps with a side hustle in pyramid construction during their off-season from farming. Think of it like the ancient Egyptian version of gig work, but instead of delivering food, they delivered massive stone blocks, materials, and transport. These folks quarried limestone locally because, why not? It's like they had an infinite supply of Lego bricks. For the fancy bits, they imported limestone from Tura for that smooth outer casing, which sadly, most of it got stolen over time. Granite was the VIP material used for the king's chambers. Like having marble countertops in your tomb, moving the stones. Now picture this. Sledges, ramps, and a lot of elbow grease. The old water on the sand trick might have been used to reduce friction, making it easier to drag those blocks. It's like the ancient world's version of WD-40, raising the blocks. Ramps were probably the key. Imagine a giant, spiraling ramp around the pyramid, like the world's most confusing parking garage. Or maybe they had some ingenious internal ramps or levers. Think of it as a giant, ancient game of Tetris, but with stone, precision, and engineering. They didn't have GPS, but they had the stars, and they knew how to use them. Their alignment with true north is like ancient Egyptian saying, hold my beer, to modern surveyors. They used simple tools like plumb bobs and water levels. But with such accuracy, you'd think they had some cosmic help. The real question, how did they get everyone to agree on this? Imagine the project meeting. Okay, team, we're building a giant triangle. Why? Because the pharaoh wants to get to the afterlife in style. So, in summary, the pyramids were built with a combination of skilled labor, clever engineering, and probably a lot of just no with an attitude. They had no cranes, no heavy machinery, just human ingenuity, teamwork, and a bit of divine intervention or so they believed. It's like if humanity decided to host the ultimate cosmic prank, saying, look what we did without any of your fancy future stuff. Version 2. Picture this. The ancient Egyptians, not content with just inventing writing, beer, and the art of looking fabulous in linen, decided one day that they needed something to top it all off. Here's how they did it, in the most hilariously plausible way. The ultimate let's build something party. The pharaoh's bet. The pharaoh, let's call him Horus the hipster, decided he wanted to leave a mark bigger than the last pharaoh's. So he bet his vizier he could build the world's first skyscraper, but, you know, horizontal and pointy. Designing by committee. They held a massive design meeting where everyone got a say, including the royal zoo animals. The final design was a compromise between what the camels thought was practical and what the cats deemed aesthetically pleasing. The workforce. Instead of slaves, they had a workforce of farmers, brewers, and the occasional pyramid enthusiast. Think of it like the world's first Kickstarter project where everyone chipped in to see their name in hieroglyphs. Moving the stones. They invented the world's first Bring Your Own Stone Festival. Each worker had to bring a stone as their entry ticket. The Nile was turned into the world's longest conveyor belt with blocks floating down like ancient Amazon deliveries. Construction techniques. Ramps. Sure. But they were also into early forms of parkour, lifting stones with a combination of brute strength and momentum. Picture a giant game of ancient Egyptian Red Rover where instead of holding hands, they were passing massive blocks. The secret sauce. Divine intervention, they claimed. But really, it was just a lot of coffee or its ancient equivalent and an endless supply of motivation speeches about immortality. They probably had a pyramid-building playlist, too. You can't underestimate the power of a good beat. Precision tools. They used the stars for alignment, which was basically their version of using GPS. But for the really fine details, they had a secret weapon. The Royal Architect's intuition, enhanced by a few too many nights spent staring at constellations. Completion celebration. When the pyramid was done, they threw the biggest party the world had ever seen. 
The pyramid itself was used as a giant slide for the festivities. They probably had pyramid-themed drinks, like the Sphinx Slurpee. So, in essence, the pyramids were built through a mix of extreme teamwork, innovative problem-solving, a dash of divine storytelling, and probably a lot of ancient Egyptian humor. After all, if you're going to spend decades building something that big, you've got to keep the more L up with a good laugh, right? All right, strap on for the raunchy, uncensored version of pyramid construction. The Pharaoh's Ball's out that. Pharaoh's grand scheme. The Pharaoh, let's call him Khufu the cocky bastard, wakes up one day and decides his dick needs to be the one thing seen from space. He bets his entire harem he can build a monument so big it'll make the gods look like amateurs. Design phase, the clusterfuck. They get all the high priests, architects, and the drunkest scribe together. After too much lotus wine, they sketch out this giant stone dildo pointing to the heavens. Everyone's input is considered, even the royal goats, because why the fuck not? Workforce, the sweat squad. Instead of slaves, they round up every farmer, baker, and candlestick maker in the land. No work. No pussy was the recruitment slogan. They worked harder than a virgin on prom night, moving the stones, the epic clusterfuck. They floated the stones down the Nile like ancient Egyptian cocaine boats. At the site, they dragged them using sledges greased with animal fat and a bit of spit and a whole lot of swearing. Move your lazy ass or I'll use your head as a ramp was a common motivational speech. Construction, the phallic feet. Ramps were built, but not without some innovative thinking. They probably used a few ancient Egyptian power tools. If you catch my drift, think of it as the world's first construction site orgy for team bonding. They lifted stones with more grunt than a porn star on set. The secret juice. They told everyone it was divine intervention. But really, it was a cocktail of beer, sweat, and sheer fucking willpower. Plus, a bit of hallucinogenic herbs for the really tough day precision, balls and cubits. They used the stars for alignment, but also a shitload of trial and error. Measure twice, cut once was their mantra, but they probably measured once and hoped for the best. Their tools. A plum bob and a lot of fuck it. It's close enough. The big reveal. When it was done, they celebrated like they'd just won the world's most epic game of Jenga. They probably had pyramid-themed orgies with everyone trying to get their name carved inside for a shot at immortality, or at least a good time. So, in a nutshell, the pyramids were built through a mix of brute force, a lot of cursing, and the kind of innovative spirit you'd find in a room full of horny, motivated, half-drunk Egyptians. Because if you're going to build something that fucking huge, you better make it fun, right?